Well, first of all, a bit of good news because yesterday was the sentencing for child abuse victim and whistleblower Melanie Shaw at Nottingham Crown Court. And uh, M Melanie um, came out of court uh, with a three-year pr probation order on her. Um, this was partly unclear because apparently it's simply going to be the probation service that decide uh, what rules she's got to adhere to. And of course, uh, people should be aware that the probation service throughout the country is rapidly being privatised. So we're going to gently ask, could it be that Melanie Shaw will have to do as a private company tells her in the future? But nevertheless, good news that she wasn't put back into prison. She's been released. So here's a picture of Melanie and some of the people who very kindly travelled quite some distance uh, to be at that court case. Um, Melanie sent a stage there. Um, but we're going to take you through um, the background to Melanie Shaw's case and put together some of the key pieces so that our audience today can actually judge uh, what is really going on with child abuse, what was going on with Beechwood child abuse, and what the position of the police uh, now is, and indeed what the p position of the uh, mainstream media. So let's see if we can take you through a UK column wiring diagram. Um, well, here we go. So Melanie Shaw, first of all, whistle blows on her own abuse and wider children's uh, child abuse at Beechwood home in Nottingham. And she states very clearly that alongside particularly vile sexual and physical abuse of children, there were children who were being suicided and she maintains that children were also murdered on the site. So as a result of her whistleblowing, Nottinghamshire police start what they called Operation Daybreak and uh, very quickly there were further victims coming forward. Eventually there were sufficient victims that it forced Nottingham City and County Councils to start paying out compensation and some £250,000 was paid out to some 25 victims. So there can be no doubt that abuse was taking place uh, because the council was paying out compensation. But of course, this is a civil court action which is effectively trying to buy people off. This is not criminal action to bring the uh, perpetrators of the abuse to book. So um, Melanie Shaw, around this time, very uh, re receives what she describes as a friendly warning. And that warning was that if she kept speaking out about the child abuse around Beechwood Home, they will take her son. And uh, the friendly part of this is uh, Melanie herself believes she was being told this uh, to help her. It wasn't being given as a direct threat. But let's see what then subsequently happened. Because very quickly, uh, Melanie is harassed by social services. And after a report into social services by one of her neighbours, social services then indeed take her son and uh, he's, he's later put into foster care. Um, the social services also quickly try and brand Melanie as mentally ill and there is an attempt to section her. Um, Melanie later comes down to visit the UK column to tell her story. She gives us a graphic account of not only her own abuse of Beechwood but that of other children. And again, she says point blank that uh, children were being suicided and she had... Um, reason to believe that a significant number of children were murdered. Um, uh, at about this time, the judge decided that uh, the civil compensation claims would be stopped until Nottingham Police had completed their Operation Daybreak. So the civil action was effectively put on hold because we were led to believe that the police were going to carry through their uh, their investigation under daybreak. And Nottingham Police then stated that over 90 children were likely to have been abused at Beechwood. But despite that, the police failed to carry out a full forensic investigation of the site. And despite the significant number of documented suicides, they failed to start any form of murder investigation. 
And uh, shortly after that, the council then sold the Beechwood site, uh, not to an independent third party, uh, but somebody with whom they were working in partnership. Well, where does it go from there? Well, Melanie was then to discover that Nottinghamshire police uh, were lying over their daybreak investigation and she had particular evidence that where the police said they were interviewing people, uh, that was simply not possible. And then things started to turn nasty because it's about this time that Melanie is accused of arson in setting fire to a neighbour's garden shed and um, carrying out criminal damage at their house. That's throwing paint at a wall. Uh, but we have discovered that uh, 999 police call logs show nothing to do with a call for a serious fire. And surprisingly, there's no mention of the fire on Nottinghamshire Fire Service uh, web-based records. Uh, there were also incorrect police and press reports at that time as to the date of the fire and uh, investigation by supporters for UK Column who interviewed neighbours found that uh, they, they, they couldn't actually remember fire appliances being there for two hours during the night. Well, Melanie was uh, charged nonetheless, and then she was bailed with a restriction on approaching her neighbours. Uh, but Melanie's neighbour then came to her own house, which forced Melanie to call the police to say that she had somebody on her doorstep with whom she was not allowed to have any contact. Having made that report, Melanie was asked to report to the police uh, but when she reported to Nottinghamshire Police, she was arrested and held in secret until the UK column reported her as a missing and highly vulnerable person. And at that point, Nottinghamshire Police then admitted they would got her in custody. So um, uh, Melanie then goes on to be held under brutal conditions at Sodexo Prison in Peterborough. Uh, she was th there for three months, she was bullied, she was put in solitary confinement and perhaps most unpleasantly, uh, she had absolutely no proper treatment for a very serious uh, leg ulcer, nor did she remember, uh, nor did she receive her normal medication. Well, at Nottingham Crown Court, Melanie was subsequently found guilty of arson, reckless and criminal damage. Those present uh, witnessed flawed evidence. Um, no mention made of the fact that there was ongoing arson in the area, arson which had been carried on on a regular basis over at least a year and was ongoing. Uh, that didn't come into the court at all. There was no f um, fire expert called to talk about the fire. There was no defence character witnesses brought forward for Melanie. Her long-term psychiatrist was not called into court to talk on her uh, mental state. Uh, the handwriting expert brought in by the Crown Prosecution Service could not confirm that her findings uh, were beyond all reasonable doubt, i.e. it was Melanie's handwriting beyond all reasonable doubt, and the police simply failed to investigate the numerous other fingerprints that were found at the scene of the crime. Uh, many of the public present said that the judge was sleeping at at least one point during the trial, uh, but the same judge told the jury and indeed the court that Nottinghamshire Police Operation Daybreak is, quote, a conspiracy theory. Well, where did this lead us? Uh, it took us on to Melanie being placed on remand and kept tagged and under a night curfew. Um, it's then resulted in Melanie being sentenced uh, at Crown Court yesterday to three years control by probation and significantly the judge uh, did not refer to any reports by Melanie's own long-term psychiatrist. He relied on a report written while she was under great duress in HM Prison Peterborough where a psychiatrist said after a one-hour assessment uh, that uh, he considered that she was possibly um, uh, sorry, she, she was certainly mentally ill and delusional. So the judge yesterday focused on that and he said, because I accept, Melanie Shaw, sure you're mentally ill and, and delusional, uh, I'm not going to send you to prison. I'm going to give you the three-year probation order. Well, of course, the effect of this is that 
Theresa May, the Crown Prosecution Service and the British state have achieved their aim of bullying and intimidating a child abuse witness and whistleblower, Melanie Shaw. And of course, they've now achieved a very important aim that they can undermine her credibility as a child abuse witness by falsely branding her as delusional. So welcome to uh, David Cameron's uh, world. Um, Nottingham Police claim at the moment that Operation Daybreak still exists, but we understand from people very close to the police that all they're really doing at the moment is delegating a bit of investigation to officers when they can be spared. So we're going to say just follow the track record of what has actually taken place around Melanie Shaw. Uh, 90 child abuse victims at Beechwood and we've got a senior high court judge saying this conspiracy theory yeah. and we've got one of the key whistleblowers uh, now victimised and branded as delusional. This is, it's outrageous. It is David Cameron's conservative Britain in uh, 2014. And of course, we'll mention her again in a minute, Theresa May, uh, absolutely responsible for what's gone on here. So outside the court, um, it was fascinating that I'm going to call him a very grey gentleman turned up. Uh, here he is circled. We understand this man was a plainclothes Nottingham police officer. Uh, we also believe that he is part of Operation Daybreak. But of course, nobody knew why he was there. He didn't declare why he was there. So we're going to say duties unknown. Uh, if anybody can give us any more information, uh, we would we'd like to receive it. So um, what did the local press got to say? Well, it was alleged that the Nottingham Post cannot report on the Beechwood child abuse case due to, well, they didn't quite say pressure, uh, dialogue with the local authorities and Nottingham police. So it seems that there in Nottingham, you can't actually get out there and do investigative journalism and report the truth because you have to have permission by um, Nottingham City Council and Nottinghamshire Police. BBC, meanwhile, um, clearly um, worried. Um, no reports from the BBC about Melanie Shaw. Uh, we spoke to them this morning and received a bizarre response. So the UK column called BBC Nottingham simply to ask why the BBC was not reporting the Melanie Shaw case or indeed child abuse in Nottingham. And uh, when we told the lady who answered the phone, we will be reporting at one o'clock, we will be reporting at one o'clock, um, she claimed that we were threatening her. It's a most unbelievable um, telephone call. However, a little bit later, um, they seem to have changed their mind. So the BBC said, well, we have been reporting on what's a very complicated story, but for legal reasons, uh, there are certain things we can't report. Uh, but it's ongoing and we'll continue to report where and how we BBC can. So BBC very, very squeamish on the subject of uh, Nottingham child abuse. Um, they can't report. Mm. Why do we think that is? Legal teams? Governmental pressure? All of the above. Child abusers in positions of power in the BBC? The imagination runs riot. Yeah, that's it from us today. We will be back um, with the news uh, one o'clock on Monday. See you then. Bye bye. bye. bye.